does the water feel too deep? Lie awake cause you can't sleep without it Ever feel like you're alone When you're lost but you're already home Lie awake cause you can't dream without it It's gonna be alright I'm never gonna leave your side It's gonna be alright I'm flawed, I know this You like me in small doses What am I supposed to do with that? You say I bring the drama Like you got halos on ya Half the time it's you that makes me mad I'm wild, I'm jealous, insane I'm scared but I don't run away It's pissing me off and you say Calm down, calm down like that You know that I'm in it for real Everything that I feel, yeah, to me it is a big deal. So don't come at me like that, and it's true. I can't seem to shake you loose, cause all this insecurity is hurting me. Tired of trying to be perfect for you. I'm done jumping through hoops. There's too much time I've wasted on chasing and facing.
Hello, my name is Dale Herbeck and I am chair of the Communication Studies Department, which includes the Media and Screen Studies Program. And I'd like to welcome you to the department's virtual graduation uh, for the class of 2021. Uh, normally my job would be to congratulate all of you on this impressive accomplishment, um, clearing Northeastern and starting you know, down the path to a very, very successful year. Uh, this time, however, I'd like to go off in a slightly different direction. And on behalf of the faculty, the academic and the co-op advisors and all of our professional staff, I would like to thank all of you. Um, last year, um, you know, we kind of shut down in March and I think we were all in shock when we got to graduation. And it happened so quick, we didn't really have time to think about it. This year though, I think all of us appreciate what we lost uh, due to the pandemic. Um, all the kind of class sessions where we would have got to know each other, right, to kind of come together uh, didn't occur. A lot of the student activities um, were kind of canceled. Uh, we didn't have all of the sporting events and there was really kind of limited interaction. Uh, we couldn't actually bump into people, right, on the way to get lunch or anything like that. And um, I think as a community, we're, we were diminished. So I'd like to thank all of you uh, for your patience as we kind of withered, right, kind of the pandemic, for your persistence, right, for kind of staying the course and for all of your hard work. And yes, you know, in addition to thanks, I would like to congratulate you. And today we're going to celebrate you with a kind of a short program. So now I'd like to pass the microphone, so to speak, off to Susan Pacillo, one of our faculty members, a distinguished professor of storytelling and she will serve as the MC uh, for the remainder of this event. Susan, I'm passing the mic. Thank you very much, Dale. Good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to uh, be able to present our first speaker for today's program. Uh, it is Cassie Moreno. Unfortunately, I never worked with Cassie, but she has quite the resume and uh, again, she is a proud member of the Comm Studies Department. Uh, Cassie is a communication studies and theater uh, graduate from the class of 2018. She is she has held positions, <clears throat> excuse me, in political communication roles in Boston, New York City, DC, and Virginia. In 2020, Cassie served as the communication director for Siraj Patel's Upstart Con 
congressional campaign in New York City, where the disputes over mail-in ballots made national headlines and served as a warning to Democrats ahead of the 2020 election. She also served as the communications director for City Councilor Michelle Wu here in Boston, press secretary for Senator Mark Warren, and in Speaker Pelosi's press office. Cassie was very active in, uh, in the theater department and productions here and international relations when she was at Northeastern. Uh, I recently connected with Cassie and just kind of reached out and asked her a little bit about what her hopes were for the summer. She has a long bucket list. And some of those things I think is she's very much anticipating New York City reopening um, she's setting, she, she said in her words, she's setting a high bar for summer. She wants to go to Coney Island, maybe be an extra in a movie, maybe having a chance encounter with a celebrity and perhaps forming a, a, a trivia team. Um, she's most looking forward to returning to Maine where Cassie is from and spending some, some time there. And when travel plans lift a little bit, she wants to head to Scandinavia. I'm very proud and very honored to introduce to you our student speaker and alumni speaker, Cassie Moreno. Thank you so much, Professor Bacillo. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And thank you so much. And congratulations, NU Communication Studies graduates of 2021. Uh, my name is Cassie Marino. And as a class of 2018 Com Studies graduate, I want to thank Chair Herbeck, the Communication Studies Department professors, Camdi, and our graduates and family and friends for allowing me to be with you today as your alumni speaker. I want to begin by sharing the stories of two Northeastern students, both of whom graduated in my class of 2018. Stick with me here because I'm going to test you on these students at the end. All right, so student A chose Northeastern after not getting into her dream college theater programs. You could call her experience bumpy. She didn't end up taking co-ops that were in her major, she didn't do a full study abroad and she often missed social events and parties on campus because she was catering most nights in order to pay for her Boston rent. There were so many clubs on campus she thought she might like and she didn't have time to explore them all. She ended up graduating and switching from job to job, which meant constantly reapplying and constantly explaining to friends and family why her employer had changed yet again. Her experience felt disjointed and she ended up moving out of Boston a year after graduation and still today is just kind of figuring things out. Student B came to Northeastern one week early to do a freshman community service program. And from that moment on, she worked to soak up all that Northeastern has to offer. She explored different careers through her co-ops at the Boston Globe and on Capitol Hill. She did two dialogue experiences and she traveled to places that she never imagined she would, such as Poland and Nicaragua. She joined club after club and looks back and laughs at the time. She even tried stand up comedy at a late night variety show called Fortnite. She fell in love with the city of Boston and with the political campaigns she volunteered on, and she pursued campaign work in New York City after college. She loves that Northeastern prepared her for so many rich experiences, and she loves that she found an early career that in many ways feels like additional co-ops. Okay, so these are the two students. I want you to take a moment and think about their two stories, student A and student B. If you were to describe your experiences at Northeastern, which student would be more like you? Which student would you wanna be friends with? Which one would you like to hear speak at a graduation? Which one would you hire for a job? Okay, does everyone have their answer? Here's the thing. Both of these stories are about the same student. And as some astute listeners might have put together already, both of these stories happened to me. Over this year and last year, I know your Northeastern story has taken a very different turn. Coming out of college in the middle of a global pandemic, it would be so easy to tell a story like my version A, that college didn't end up being what you intended and that things happened differently than you planned. But when we thought about it, did we want to hire student A to join our team? Did her experiences make sense leading to a goal or did she seem kind of lost? After that exercise, I'm willing to bet that most of you wanted the graduation speech to be from student B, the one with all of the rich experiences. 
Now think about that story that you tell yourself about your own college experience, about where you've been and about where you're going after today. Which pieces do you tend to emphasize? How could you reframe some of your more negative experiences like a tough co-op or a full year of remote learning to take on a more positive light? Which stories really speak to your values, to your, your compassion and your sense of humor and your ability to get things done under pressure? And why do you tend to leave so many of those positive stories out? When you tell yourself the story of your years at Northeastern, I hope you stand in your power and tell a story that does all of your hard work and happy moments justice. I hope you tell the stories of staying up super late to perfect that project or paper, of collaborating with your classmates to create something that had never been done before, of having your eyes completely opened at a co-op, or laughing in the dorms until your stomach literally hurts. I hope you tell the story of the times you dug deep to find resilience in the midst of so much darkness, and of the amazing coincidences, happy circumstances, or extra time with family that only happened because of COVID. Like my story of student B, I hope you're able to sit with the difficulty. In the end, I didn't end up becoming an actress, at least not yet, but also that you're able to bask in the goodness of what happened instead. Since graduating from Northeastern, I have worked in political communications. And I do a lot of informational interviews because if you can't tell yet, I love to tell my story. But so many times I get on these calls with someone and they'll say some variation of, but I don't know how to get a political job because I have the wrong experience and I'll stop them. Because even though we've just met, I can guarantee that this is not a story that does justice to their lived experiences to the challenges they've already overcome or the problems that they've already solved. Typically, my advice goes something like this. Let's say you want to be a political communications director, but you did your co-ops in environmental science. How can you tell a story that connects where you've been with where you want to be in a way that is completely unique to you? Maybe you could say that you've noticed that candidates and elected officials care more and more about the climate crisis these days, and that you pursued environmental science first so that you could be more prepared to tell those stories as a political communications director. This is just one example, but no matter where you're going or that new goal that comes to mind, using your power to tell your story and then edit your story and then tell it again as life continues to unfold in unexpected ways is one of the most powerful tools that you have. As CAMD graduates, we are artists and creators and communicators. There are a million different career paths that communication studies has prepared you for. It's just up to you to tell your story in a way that will get you where you want to be. No matter what happens, whether it's a job loss or a sudden move, or yes, even a global pandemic, you have the power to use the communication skills you have honed at Northeastern to tell a story to yourself and the world that does justice to your incredible accomplishments, achievements, experiences, and moments of growth. If there's anyone who deserves to be celebrated for their stories, it's the class of 2021. Thank you so much. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you so much, Cassie. Susan, you're muted. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Um, I want to say thank you to Cassie for joining us today. And um, I'd like to just go forward with the program. As you know, we've heard it over and over again. We've talked about it ad nauseum. Yes, it's been a very difficult year. And there are so many ways that we would want to celebrate you. As communication studies faculty, of course, we missed having our honors celebration and having our courting celebration and so on and so forth, but we made some adjustments. And so this also is an opportunity for the faculty that you have had during your four, perhaps five years that you've been here, there are a number of people who would like to wish you well. And so I'd like to uh, present now the, uh, the video tribute 
to all of our graduates and throw out a very special thank you to Professor Michelle Carr for editing this piece and putting it together for us. Michelle. Congratulations to the class of 2021. We're all so proud of you and wishing you the best of luck on all of your future endeavors. Comp Studies graduates, congratulations. I take my hat off to you. Create the life that you want to live. Congratulations, everybody. I hope that everything works out for you in life and I hope you had a great time at Northeastern. Congratulations, class of 2021. You did it, you're amazing. You're gonna do great things with your life. Please keep in touch. We love you and we're gonna miss you. Remember folks, always wear your pads and have a righteous and gnarly future. I wanna congratulate all of the 2021 oh. graduates. You should be really proud of yourselves and where you're at. Obviously you've been through a lot uh, in these last couple of years, but um, you should be really hopeful about the future and uh, feel a, a huge sense of accomplishment for, for graduating and, um, and doing everything that you did at Northeastern. And I've gotten to know a lot of you and I hope that you stay in touch. And thank you for always being an engaging class that incorporated wit and wisdom into our class discussions. You have developed lifelong skills of critical thinking and communicating that will serve you in whatever you do in life. So congratulations. Take pride in your degree. You've earned it. Now go ahead, making the world a better place. I wanted to say congratulations and that we're all so proud of you and all that you've accomplished during your time at Northeastern. Uh, my piece of advice for you is to remember to value your interpersonal relationships on your path to success. Uh, remember your families, your friends, your significant others, and bear in mind that success feels so much sweeter when you share it with others. Uh, congratulations and best of luck. Congratulations to all of our graduating seniors. Unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to meet any of you this year, but it was a joy getting to see some of you through Zoom. And just remember that if the going gets tough along the way, if you made it through this year, you can make it through anything. You began with your ragged claws dragging along the ocean floor. But soon your fins churned the green sea foam and your tentacles acquired stereoognosis. And now you're graduating. Congratulations. Congratulations on your graduation, folks. You did it. This is a significant milestone, and even if it doesn't look like what you may have expected, it's still a really big day. So good luck with what comes next. The knowledge and experience you've gained here at Northeastern, combined with your ability to overcome the obstacles of this last year, are going to carry you far. Good luck. Congratulations. It's time to celebrate. Congratulations on graduating. Everybody in this community is so excited to see what you do with the future and how you're going to use these skills to make the world a better place. Have a great summer. I hope you're able to celebrate all of your hard work and accomplishments. I know it's been quite a journey, but I've enjoyed working with all of you and I'm going to miss you. When you first started at Northeastern, I suspect that you envisioned something a little bit different for your final year in college. However, I have been continuously impressed and appreciative of the way that you have responded to these challenging new circumstances your thoughtfulness, your patience and kindness, as well as the new communication and learning skills that you have developed on the fly will serve you well in the next part of your career. Congratulations, graduates. I'm so proud of you. Congratulations on your graduation and best wishes for your next adventure. Seniors, what can I say? There was a whole lot for you to handle this year. But through the canceled plans, the social distancing, the masks, and the endless Zooms, you did it. Class of 2021 is one I'm always going to remember. You're strong, resilient, and if I can say so, excellent at styling your Zoom backgrounds. Congratulations. I'm going to miss you. One day in the library, puzzled and distracted, leafing through a dull book, I came on a picture of the vase containing Buddha's relics. A chill passed over me. I was haunted by the touch of a calm 
I cannot know. The opening into that busy place of a better world. Congratulations, graduates. Congratulations, everyone. Wishing you the very best of luck for your bright futures ahead. If I'm entirely honest, I would have liked to stay with you for another semester, discussing what's just and what's sound until we forgot whose idea it was that sparked beauty, softness, and space. Congratulations, graduates. Follow your passions and tell your stories. We're very proud of you. Hey, 2021 grads, so proud that you made it this far. You have a whole world and a whole life in front of you. So carry on, do well, be true to your heart, and... In the wise words of Monica Geller from Friends, welcome to the real world. It sucks. You're gonna love it. My warmest congratulations to all of the communication and media studies majors in the class of 2021. When I think about the graduating class of 2021, I'm filled with an immense sense of pride, but also a little jealousy. Uh, I'm proud of all of your success in the face of so much adversity, but I'm jealous of all of the people that get to share a space with you in the years to come. I hope those people appreciate you as much as we have during your time at Northeastern. Congratulations. Congratulations, everyone. Back to you, Susan. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that very much and to all of the faculty who are participating. So there has been a, um, a tradition uh, when someone is leaving the campus or leaving our department that we have them actually speak at one of the events that, uh, that I mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to do that face to face, but I still, um, but we still want to very much honor um, and say a farewell to one of our colleagues. Now you can look up all the information you need about what Marie Odile Hobeka has done in her life academically. She's taught just about every class here at Northeastern. And as I said, she has uh, degrees, she has um, accolades, but you can look all those up. I wanted to offer as an introduction, some of the things about Odile that perhaps you do not know. So let me start with, Odile is a daughter of two incredibly beautiful immigrant parents and their family spans four continents. She grew up in an Arabic speaking household, but she quickly got the hang of reading English at her family's restaurant at the front counter where she um, had to parlay with, with audiences that came into the restaurant. She was also afforded the luxury and the detour of uh, receiving all kinds of books that she could, again, just immerse herself in. And that was her world for a long period of time. So it's only now, of course, that she seems like she's catching up on every television and every film that she never really spent the time to watch. When she had the opportunity uh, to travel with her debate club and team in high school and college, she um, had a long introduction to regional cultures and social policies in the United States. And that's where that love and passion began. By the time she entered graduate school, she thought for sure that it was the life of books, letters, and conference travel. It was the only one that she could possibly lead. Odile is leaving us this year, and as she leaves after her 11th year of teaching, she says that she's eager now to take a reprieve from scholastics and to embark on a new challenge of perhaps designing research for corporate innovation initiatives in diversity and inclusion. On a personal note, I've had the unique privilege of sharing a seat at the faculty conference table with Odile, and I have always admired her relentless vibrancy, vivacity, and her great sense of humor. Odile's told me that she has no plan right now, actually no job right this moment. And yet she is very excited and in her words that the, the, the floor has fallen out from beneath her feet and she can't wait to find out what happens next. Odile, from all of your colleagues and all of your many students who have admired your work and admired your presence and your humanness about being in our department, we can't wait to find out what happens next as well. Ladies and gentlemen, graduates, this is Odile Hobeka. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Piccillo, uh, for your heartfelt words. 
and I want to extend a warm welcome to um, our parents and friends and extended family, those that are joining us today and that some of you that are going to join us in the future. It is my deep privilege to speak on behalf of my departments of faculty um, for today's commencement. Your degree frees you to live intelligently. It prepares you to professionalize in any number of industries to pursue an advanced education or to hitch your wagon across country and to relish in what that wandering means. Without detracting from your accomplishments, I can't help but share a question that many of us might want to keep at arm's length. That is, as a great number of our global family suffers and as a relief and recovery are distributed unequally, how can we celebrate? If you're anything like the student I used to be, to know yourself is, in ordinary times, an outcome of little pains. It was driven by managing coursework, uh, clocking overtime hours at a job, early morning practice, that tidy little set of flashcards, <laughs> the 8 a.m. final exam, and even the dreaded laundry day. Academic life proposed a very abstract notion of excellence, but as evidenced by your acceptance to this university and your anticipated success in a world that will no doubt demand even more little pains, you broke the abstraction of excellence into concrete steps and you proved yourself capable. So if excellence still drives you, I'd ask you to brush it aside for now and make space to reflect on your journey. The past year hasn't been ordinary. Undeniably, it has led you to deeper um, and into extraordinary realm of larger pains and maybe even more practical ideals. It might not have been your grandparent or your roommate or anyone you know, but those of you I have had the privilege to teach and communicate with have expressed a heightened awareness of individual and collective upheaval, disruption, and even loss. Sometimes you arrived to class late because you had to power cycle your Wi-Fi or you responded on Zoom chat because you were joining in from a bustling family living room or Curry Student Center. The upheaval prompted us to consider that most people on earth don't, don't live with a master plan. Ralph Waldo Emerson once wrote, uh, know thyself if you can bear the strong meat of simple truth. The point here is that the journey of one's mind, the examined life uh, of knowing oneself, it actually begins in the body, in the stomach turning realization of our expiration. And when that truth hits, we might be visited by doubts on the little labors, the little pains. We might become hyperactive, but if we're lucky, we actually learn to pause and rest and we learn that these activities aren't for other people. They can be for us. This year, science verified what has always been true to our ancestors, that breath is singular and that we can look upon the face of anyone or anything around us and say, as a moral declaration and a spiritual, cosmological and biological fact, you are a part of me I do not yet know. Yet as we continue to learn about our vulnerabilities, many have had to do so from a distance and in spite or because of that distance, some are finally reckoning with the social factors that were already working to keep us apart. 
given the academic spirit of triumph of this day, it might seem appropriate to keep upheaval, loss, and pain behind us. In the great war in modern memory, Paul Fussell comments that veterans fall silent, not so much because their bad news is unspeakable, but that no one is very interested in the bad news they have to report. In spite of social cues to the contrary, many veterans seek groups to communicate their experience of loss and uncertainty. And communicating about loss and uncertainty in the open is a wisdom of nurture. These are uncertain times and these times carry a powerful charge to respect that our bodies need rest and that part of celebration is rest. In one of the most remarkable studies of human communication and psychology, Dr. Clarissa Pincola Estes collected oral histories, interviews, myths, fairy tales from among the Inuit in the North, the Pueblo and Plains people in the West, the rare and old Latino communities from the Southwestern border and ethnic communities in the urban Midwest. What she found was a nearly universal motif in these stories, that hardship and exile either drove communities into silencing their members in what she compares to uh, death before life's end, or she found it drove communities to untangle the life and death cycle, to tell richer yarns, sing more soulful music, and lead more creative lives. This commencement, though one of the first ripples of celebration in a global pond, is not simply an empty routine. There is hope for those of us who dare to find it despite challenging circumstances. James Baldwin remarked that hope cannot wish reality away Quote, I live a hope despite my knowing better. This idea that we celebrate despite our knowing presents us with the choice. Do we treat despair as more convincing than hope? Or do we celebrate how the past year has strengthened the psychical sinews between us and our families and friends and extended communities? Do we pretend to return to normal life with its abstract ideals like excellence? Or do we awake, ready to understand our life a little bit more consciously? Today, we are celebrating the recovery of choice. If you'll indulge me, we can even imagine the tradition of tossing graduation caps as a requirement for beginning by overthrowing the certainty with which we used to approach our futures and ordinary times. So rather than wishing you excellence, professionalization, continued education, all the things that you no doubt will accomplish in the years ahead, I'd rather celebrate the rich yarns you will exchange, the instruments you will take up in concert, the courage you will find in setting out on an early morning hike alone, or the uninhibited dance of your dreams, even despite uncertainty. Meanwhile, the entire world depends on it. Thank you, Odile. We're very grateful for your comments. Thank you so much and for your voice of hope. And we wish you the same. Thank you very much. So this is a little bit kooky, but we wanna be able to offer just an, basically an open mic to anybody who might like to share something, whether it's a greeting to 
someone on the faculty, you want to just congratulate the the um, your other friends and colleagues and so on and so forth. So it would be really helpful uh, if you would either either put yourself up on the screen and wave your hand and then I'll, I'll, I'll know where you are, or you can put the name in the chat or you can connect with either Steve or Professor uh, Steve Grinelli or Professor Carr um, and let them know and then I'll just try to find you. So um, we, I think we have uh, someone who might be interested in speaking. Wait, just a moment. I think it's Ruhani Nigam. Ruhani? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone for the great ceremony. I really appreciate the fact that the faculty is trying really hard to make this ceremony really great for us and it's definitely come through and the effort is really shown. So thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to say I am extremely proud to be a communications major for several reasons. Um, one is that the faculty are just amazing in the way that they keep students engaged. They're very considerate of our humanity. And there are so many people that I've converted to comm majors because of that, because I'm always just raving about the comm department. So I'm very grateful um, for that. And especially in the wake of the pandemic, um, it's been the adaptability has has been great so thank you um second thing is i've been a peer mentor for three years and i've really appreciated the opportunity to um you know have the opportunity to speak with these freshmen and transfer students for two reasons one is because um they've they've trusted me with their vulnerability and that really means the world to me and also each incoming class is more daring than the next. They just wanna push the boundaries more than the last one. So um, as I've grown, I've continued to be inspired by the classes coming in. Um, and third, I just wanted to thank Steve Grinelli. Um, he is far more than just a professor or any sort of advisor. Um, he's become a trusted friend, a role model, um, he has taught me that uh, being uncomfortable isn't a bad thing. It means that I'm growing. And Steve, I just wanted to thank you so much. You really made my Northeastern experience everything. So thank you. Thank you so much, Rahani. Thank you very much. Um, someone else who would like to offer a few comments is Ariana Matos. Ariana? Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for this celebration. I really appreciate the effort, just like Rohani mentioned, despite it, everything being virtual. And I just wanted to hop on and give thanks to all of the amazing professors that I've had during my time here at Northeastern and in the communications department. I've grown immensely. I came in as a transfer student, very unaware and confused as to what I wanted to do with that degree. And I've developed so much to the point that I have a little bit of a deeper understanding of what I want to do because of the great role models that I've had here in this department, specifically Professor Wells from Social Networks, um, Professor Mello with Health Communication Campaigns and Comp Theory, and of course, Steve, uh, as well with uh, Introduction to Communications and being a, a peer mentor with Rohani as well. And Obeka as well, Odiel. Thank you so much for pushing me uh, beyond what I could imagine and finding a new family here in the communications department. And I will take all of what I've learned and um, continue to grow as a human being. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Ariana. Our next speaker is uh, Jasmine Chan. Jasmine? Hello. Wow, you really would have thought that I've gotten that down by now. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. I'm Jasmine. Um, I just want to echo everyone else in saying thank you to everyone that put this event together and all of the speakers we've had today. Um, I just know it's been a challenging year, to say the least, for everyone. So, uh, you know, graduating is a huge accomplishment, but after everything this year, we have so much to be proud of. So just congratulations to everyone. Thank you so much, Jasmine. We appreciate it. Um, someone else who would like to speak is Tova Lynchner. Tova. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I just want to carry on saying uh, I didn't have anything prepared, especially because um, I did graduate in summer, so I have my office right now. It's my um, vacation for the time being. Um, but I just wanted to spend 
a thank you to the entire department for setting this up, um, especially with the past few years um, being virtual and graduating a bit early. We need to feel a little bit disconnected, but I think this kind of solidified my comfort in this department and the reason why I chose to go into communication studies, especially after a few years of being undeclared and uncertain. I think I definitely took the right path. Um, it has been a difficult year for all of us, um, and I think this, my entire four years of college has been definitely the most formative of my life. And I want to extend thank you specifically to Professor Wells, um, Professor Obeka, and Professor O'Malley, who were really there for me through a challenging time and extended so much patience and support. And I appreciate you all, and thank you so much for everything you've done, and again, for putting this together. And congratulations, everyone. Thank you so much, Tova, for sharing. We appreciate it. The um, The screen is still open if anybody else would like to speak or if there might be a faculty member or someone from staff or so on and so forth. The screen is open. Hmm. I'll say something. I wasn't sure if I needed to be like called on. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say I've been grateful enough to have a number of the professors that are on the ceremony today throughout my time at Northeastern. Um, and while there have been a lot of highlights of my time and not all of them have been academic, I can confidently say that I will sincerely miss the communication studies department. As I graduate, um, I've just so enjoyed kind of the breadth of classes that I've been able to take. I've been exposed to new topics and just interest that I never knew that I would have that I'm now excited to potentially pursue after undergrad. So thank you so much for just the effort that's been put into this past week and the ceremonies that are upcoming um, and just generally like in class and just providing such a variety of classes and at such a high level. I've appreciated that throughout my four years and I will miss it. So thank you so much to everyone. Thank you, Yael, we'll miss you as well. So stay in touch. Uh, our next speaker is um, Molly Gilligan, who has something she wanted to share. Molly? Hi, yeah, I just wanted to say um, thank you to everyone in the communications department, um, students, faculty, staff alike. Um, I also came in as a transfer student uh, and coming into Northeastern as such a big school can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, and having the communications department, um, it was really a home for me. Um, and a community where I could uh, meet people and get to know people. Um, and it was really, you know, a huge reason why I loved Northeastern from day one. Um, and I just wanna thank, you know, all my professors. I've had, you know, a ton of these professors who are here today. Um, Steve, you've always been great. And uh, I know, Greg Goodale isn't here, but he was also one of my favorites. Um, Dr. Mello, Dr. H, all of you. Uh, so thank you. And um, I look forward to keeping in touch. So do we, Molly. Thank you very much. So we have, I see two hands uh, that went up. So Casey Arco. Casey? Yeah, hi. Um, I just wanted to, oh, it's weird seeing myself on the screen, but uh, I just <laughs> wanted to thank everyone in this little celebration I think I was I completely forgot about it so this is kind of like a surprise for my morning it was really um comforting um and really kind of solidified the you know experience of leaving this school and this program and all of the things that come along with that um I did want to give a couple of like shout outs specifically um I wanted to give a shout out to Jocelyn, who I didn't even know is in the meeting, who <laughs> literally helped me through so much stress and planning and um, the mess that can be scheduling and credits. I, I have complained a lot to Jocelyn and she has always comforted me and helped me, um, despite only being my advisor for, I think, like half of my time here. Um, and I've only actually had, I think, about half of, or maybe even a third of the professors in this meeting, which is kind of a shame, um, but I'm regardless um, in awe of your humanity and you know gratitude that's mutual and um, tangible that has been expressed in this meeting. And I also really wanted to give a shout out to Odile, who I didn't know was leaving, but is, uh, you know, it kind of makes sense. I mean, she's just been incredibly inspiring to me and has really um, 
just been like someone who I've gravitated to over my four years. Um, so I hope to get some contact information because I'd love to send you a little card or something. But uh, thank you again for hosting this little meeting. Um, and thank you for being a lovely program to be a part of. Great. Thank you so very, very much, Casey. Um, our next uh, offering is going to come from Brooke Stanley. Brooke? Hi. Um, there's a lot of praise that I could certainly give to the many professors in the comm department have had over the last five or so years. But the one thing I really wanted to say thanks for is all the work that the faculty and staff put in outside of the classroom to really develop a community in the comm department. That there's so much that has happened within communications between the awards banquets, the support for conference travel and for the conference dinners for people that do go away, the events that get coordinated and all the little things that they don't have to do that you've all worked on so hard to really make it feel special for every student that's part of communication studies that that's to me one of the biggest things that i'm grateful for and i'm really going to miss leaving northeastern is really just that extra effort that's put in to make every single moment within calm feel special thank you very much brooke so once again the mic is hot it's open is there anybody else who might like to offer uh, just a thought about something? You have something to say, or maybe congratulate your own peers. Faculty, maybe you have something to say. Hmm. I'll Thanks. just jump in. Yes. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, Suki. Suki. Hi. hello. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say as an international student who's from halfway across the world and a career in human interactions wasn't really something I thought about beforehand. Uh, the communications department really broadened my horizon so much. I felt very supported by the professors here and the fellow students who were all just passionate about their craft. Uh, I wanted to give a quick shout out to my academic advisor, Jocelyn, for helping me out a lot. <laughs> um, and to the professors who really made my time as a comm student and they provoked me to research the important topics that I was I was passionate about, but didn't know how to go about it, mm -hmm. um, of whom are Professor P, Steve Grinelli, Darcy D'Souza, Donica O'Malley, and Dr. Habeka. Uh, you guys really shaped my entire journey here at the Northeastern in the comm department specifically. So thank you guys. And thank you for throwing this event today and congratulations to everyone graduating. Thank you, Suki. Thank you so much. Again, the mic is hot and it's open in a good way. <laughs> You're out there. I know you are. This is a great opportunity. Take it. Steal it. All right. Ah, I see a hand. I see a hand in the corner. I'm sorry your name did not come up, but hello and welcome. You're on. Jocelyn, you're on. <laughs> who, who am I competing with? Who am I competing just go, with? Just go, it's you. <laughs> uh oh, unmute myself? I don't, okay. Hi, um, I've gotten two shout outs, which is awesome and amazing, but um, really you all are amazing. I'm super proud of every one of you. Um, some I met with a lot and some not much at all. Um, it's been a ride. Um, for the students who are in media and screen studies, um, and I taught your class, I might have seen you from the beginning until the end. Um, regardless, I'm just very, very excited for you all. You're going to change the world. I know it. Um, and um, I'm just really excited. And, you know, your faculty are amazing. And, um, you know, keep that in, in your memory and, and take what you've learned from here and, and bring it to your different places that you go. But I'm not very eloquent and I'm very emotional right now, but I'm happy for you. Congratulations, and I'm gonna stop talking. Jocelyn, thank you. And I think you're absolutely right. Our faculty is amazing, but you know what? Our advisors are amazing as well. So thank you for all of your work. Thank you. Anyone else? Susan, I'll jump in. Oh, Jackie. 
yes. I just wanted to say, you know, throughout all of this, this has been such a challenging year. And especially for those of you that are, you know, we're trying to go on co-op. Um, the good news for all of you graduating, the market is easing up and we're seeing a lot more companies now starting to reach out. So it could actually be one of the better times. You just never know. But thank you to all of you that have, you know, weathered this storm. Your resilience has been amazing and go out and make a difference in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie, for your comments. I'll just jump in real quick. Oh. Um, it's Michelle. No, um, no, I just wanted to say congratulations to all of our graduating seniors and I want to welcome you into the alumni crew. Um, we're everywhere. We're all over the world. Um, whenever you meet an alumni, they get very excited when they meet another um, alumni from Northeastern. So um, I know you guys are all going to be doing such amazing things. Um, you're smart and um, just go out there and get them. Just do it. Um, but remember us and we will always be thinking of you and you always have a home here no matter what. Um, feel free to reach out at any time, but I just wanted to say congratulations and that we love you all. Thank you, Michelle. Anyone else who may like to offer a comment? Steve Grinelli. Yes, Steve. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say anything for very long uh, because who uh, a couple of times I've already gotten emotional. So thanks, you know, thanks to Jasmine and Rahani and Ariana for doing that. Um, but I wanted to say congratulations to everybody and very excited to see where everybody ends up and stay in touch. It, 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 whether you like it or not, we're going to make sure that you stay in touch and that uh, I want to I'm, I'm very I'm very excited. Uh, to follow along your journey. And um, yeah, keep us part of it. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Grinelli, out. Thank you, Steve. Are there any other comments from anyone? Ah. Burke just offered a big thank you to Steve once again on the chat. All right, well. I think that is may conclude our our ceremony, I suppose, for, for lack of any other word. A special thank you to our alum, uh, Cassie Moreno, uh, obviously to Professor Herbeck, to Steve Grinelli, Michelle Carr, who really worked to put the whole the whole show together because it is a show after all. Um, I've been very honored to be part of this ceremony and just extremely honored to have stood before so many of you. And when I say things like, if you come by, the latte's on me, I really mean that. So we've got the Adirondack chairs, we've got Tate, you know, we've got Ginger Exchange. Come tell us your stories as a storyteller. Come back, tell us your stories, ask us for advice, sit with us, tell us some crazy embarrassing things that have happened to you in the big bad world that we really would like to hear from you. Please stay connected because that in the end, Communicare, we're sharing. That's the most important thing. You have been a joy to teach. You've been a joy to, to uh, just know, uh, keep your curiosity alive at your fingertips. Um, and we congratulate all of you. Big round of applause for all of our graduates. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Thank you everyone. And again, enjoy. Enjoy the festivities, have fun at Fenway, take lots of photos, and please post them. Post them, post them, post them, so we can see them, and then we can put them on the Com website. It would be lovely. Thank you again to everyone. Enjoy the day. Bye. Ciao. Bye. <laughs>